Sorry about that, folks. My, uh... My, my thing decided to fucking crash out of nowhere. Sorry about that. Anyway, third time's a charm. <laughs> um, so anyway, as I was saying, my next subathon, the first 30 subscribers, uh, well, once we hit 30 subscribers, I should say, um, people who have submitted character ideas via the random prompts will get the very first five random drawn, they will be very randomly drawn, will get their character inserted as a one-shot character into the webcomic at some point. If we reach a stretch goal of, say, 50 subscribers, then not only will those first five become reoccurring characters, um, we will add an extra five subscribers, or uh, five characters based off of the ones submitted by your prompts and so on and so forth until the subathon is over. But that being said, these will be random prompts. I will have a random ass, like a massively random generator up. I'm going to find the most random, obnoxious ADHD fantasy character generator thing that I can find. And we are going to make this fun. So, um, that being said, there's also going to be one more contest. We're going to have a naming contest. Um, the details will be posted further in depth elsewhere, of course. But the premise of this is it's your average, everyday, you know, modern day cafe. People are, are coming and going, getting their coffee to go, doing whatever they want to do, grab their snacks, meet up for dates, whatever. But... It's very much a, um, you know, there, there's fantasy creatures living among us. There's humans. There's freaking, you know, mermaids running the, the uh, I don't know, the water parks or something like that. I don't fucking know. I don't know what mermaids run in this world. Uh, still some world building to be done. But, um, like, you know, there's a... Like, dwarves running jewelry shops. There's hobbits running all-you-can-eat buffets or, like, running taverns in the downtown area where they serve fucking micro-brews and it's all these douchey... Oh my god, that's what it is. Halflings are hipsters. How dare you? Am I wrong? You're not. But yeah, like... Okay, we'll wait till the ad is over. Let me win the... Yeah. Let me know when the ad is done. But, um, you're not wrong. Okay, so as I was saying, we have the, the halflings running the hipster brew pubs and stuff like that in the, in the downtown university areas. Um, you've got your, uh, your elves, most of them are probably running like, you know, the clothing stores and the high fashion, the haute couture, uh, not using the term dragonborn because it is copyrighted, but the equivalent of dragonborn, I'm probably just going to call them dragon kin. Dragon kin, dragon folk. Dragon folk is copyrighted. Damn it! Pathfinder. Fuckers. Um... They're totally, like, you know, doing their thing, and just everybody has their own places they fit in and things that they run, and I had this idea of the main character of this, so, um, I don't have my sketchbook with me, and I forgot what I named her. You sent me a picture. Oh, could you pull up her name? If you can read it. Marissa. Marissa is a, uh, she's an elf, cute little girl, about 125, give or take, the equivalent to being like 19 in elf years. Um, she works at a coffee shop. 
Um, she's going to school. Don't know what for yet. Haven't gotten that far in her backstory yet. But she's working at the coffee shop to pay for books and stuff because, unfortunately, no matter what realm you're in, affordable college is just too unrealistic. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? No, let's be real. That free college is, is a fantasy world. Well, they're doing it in New Mexico. It's not worth it. Anyway, um, she's working at this cafe to, to pay for her books and her courses and stuff like that. Um, her mother is a very, uh, very prestigious, well-known fashion designer, but she's very much a, no, mom, I'm going to do it myself. I don't want your money kind of person. And her dad is a, uh, a photographer. Um, he's, he's pretty well known too. And, you know, she just, she has the option to have mom and dad pay for it, but she wants to do it herself. She wants to be like, no, I'm going to pull myself up by my, my own bootstraps. I'm going to get a real job and I'm going to show you that I can do it myself. And they're just like, okay, well, if you need help, we're here for you. And she's like, well, I appreciate the support, but I need, I, I need to do this on my own. If I need your help, I will tell you I need your help. But until then, I don't need your help. Okay, have fun at work, honey. Like, she has a very supportive family. But she is also like, no, I don't want to be like the other elves in my class. You know, I don't want to be like the other kids who are like, you know, oh, mommy and daddy pay for everything. You know, she, she wants to, them to know that she can support herself, which is a very endearing trait. Um, what she doesn't realize is what she's gotten herself into. So... This coffee shop that she works in, it is run by a, uh, I haven't decided what the race is yet, but it's an, an older, not super old, but definitely older gentleman, um, him and his husband. Um, I do know that his husband is a drow and he looks, and I, I say this because this was work. this was, I looked like in high school, he looks like he walked off the poster for Depeche Mode or The Cure. He looks like your stereotypical 90s uber goth, industrial goth, where his husband, I feel like his husband is probably a pixie or something like that. I was going to say, if you don't make that, the, the owner, if you don't make him a fucking damp here. No, that's, I'm, I'm bringing that in a whole different arc. Okay, cool. I have a plan for that, but that's different. No, um, the, the, the owner's husband is a, uh, a drow elf. And the owner himself uh, is either going to be a pixie or a fairy or a brownie or something like that. Um, but is like the uber pastel, you know, super cutesy, shiny things everywhere, loves the color pink, loves the, uh, that life is beautiful, all that fun stuff. And his husband's just like, uh-huh, yeah, sure, honey, whatever floats your boat. Like, he supports his husband and loves him very dearly, but at the same time, it's just like, do you have to be so fucking cheerful? And, again, this girl comes from a very supportive family. There is not really any trauma there. But basically, the owner is just like, oh my god, you're the most precious thing ever. I have adopted this one. She has a family. I don't care. She's mine now. And, initially, it's a case of, you know, she's... Never really had to work a day in her life. Her parents have always, you know, they've always had people around the house to help out. There's always been, you know, plenty of everything. She's never really had to work for anything. So this is very much a whole new world for her. She's basically being thrown in head first and, and of her own volition, mind you, throwing herself in head first to going, no, I'm going to do this my way. What am I doing? And, like, the first few chapters of this are going to be, um, you know, obviously a lot of world building, a lot of character building, um, establishing personalities and stuff like that. Um, but each, each episode is going to be some weird, crazy, over-the-top, like, it could come from a shoujo anime style kind of a, sh a scenario. And she's trying her hardest to, to come off as a, a normal, not from a rich family person. And she's going to learn just how to out of touch re with reality she is. Not, again, not because of anything that she has done wrong, but just because that's not how she was raised. And her, her best friend 
is a very, very, very gay, very flamboyant drag queen. Haven't decided what the drag queen is yet. I haven't decided on my random table of races that I have. But a very flamboyant drag queen who uh, works at the gay bar down the road, you know, because every coffee shop in every college town has a gay bar right down the road. I lived in Albuquerque where we had three gay bars within walking distance of each other. Can vouch. Um, <laughs> and where she's very quiet, very kind of to herself. He is very much, oh my God, yes, queen. And the, the very much, you know, oh my God, get out of your shell before I fucking lose it. Oh my God, is it the extrovert that, that adopted the introvert? It is. It's the extrovert. Oh my God, yes. It's the extrovert the, that adopted the introvert. And it's it's mostly just the, the shenanigans that she gets into at the coffee shop. Um, there will be some episodes that take place outside of the coffee shop, but that's going to be way further down the road. You know, one step at a time. And I, I do have some characters already kind of fleshed out in my head. I haven't gotten them down on paper yet for obvious reasons. But it's all going to, it's all going to be very much a, um, slice of life, just kind of a fun, probably one or two chapters a, a month kind of deal because I'm going to be doing this in between everything else. can't seem to get her eye right. Here we go. And mind you, this is just a very rough sketch for now. Obviously, we'll, we'll go and be going into more detail the later this goes on. This is just my layout. Oh, fuck me. Wrong layer. I mean, hell, maybe one of these days, once I get once I get a few chapters down, I can make a redeem on the channel where, if you redeem like a hundred thousand points or something, you can create a character to be put into the web comic. That could be fun. Obviously, there's guidelines you'd have to follow. You know, obviously, nothing that's going to be problematic or, you know, making anybody uncomfortable and stuff like that. But it could be fun.
Let's see. I feel that I recently went back and started rewriting a fanfic I started in 2012, I think. Oh, God, that was... Yeah, about 2012, my sister and I were co-writing a Bleach fanfic together, and we both decided, hey, we're better writers now. Let's restart it. Writer's block is terrible. I hate writer's block. That's why my sister and I co-write together. Is what when one of us has writer's block, the other can usually knock the other out of it. Did he edit that in? Okay. It's distractible. I know, that's why I was just like, wait a minute, Mark didn't voice over in this. Oh, she also has a, uh, a stoner friend. Because everybody has a stoner friend. Who is a satyr. Kind of moved down from the Midwest, kind of a bit of an oddball. She's the uh, the caring mom friend, but also high key. The oh, you look stressed out here, honey. Have a have a brownie. Okay, why does it look better on here than it did on my sketchbook? Why does her hair look better on here than my sketchbook? Because it's easier to edit. Um, easier answer. My art's garbage. Oh, that is so cool. I really should write my Ruby fanfic one of these days. I've had it, like... I I've had it listed out as far as, like, plot and stuff for years, um... I just never got around to it because my uncle passed away before I could start writing it. It was really hard for me to go back to it. And he was one of the ones who was encouraging me to do it. So the thought of going back and writing it without him there was really hard. But I might try and write it soon. And yes, this girl do have piercings. Her parents are very much the cool parents of the, oh, sweet, you want to get piercings? Cool, I'll take you to my guy. That's awesome. You should send me the link sometime. I'd love to read it. Hmm. I need to figure out how she dresses. Well... I don't know. What do you think, hon? What do you think would be a cute, like, modern-day fantasy barista uniform? Like a cute button-down or something? Oh, 
looking for a very specific outfit, but mm. I'm pretty sure that I screenshot it. I trust you. I guess I didn't. Is it based off of a character? Or? No. Oh. Something I saw on Facebook. Mm. I'm gonna see if I can find it again. Okay, it's happening. And we don't have the money. Is that somebody locally? It's my friend Hero. I think they moved to Texas. Oh, okay. Awesome. I will totally read that later tonight when I have a little more free time. Um. <laughs> this is the one I need. I can't. There's glare. Mm hmm I'm looking for the thing. Well, is it a skirt or pants? A skirt. Schoolgirl skirt. I don't know if she'd wear skirts, though. Like, what you were saying. She's really just kind of chill and laid back, so... Found it. Let me see. Oh my god, that is perfect. Yep. Except trading out the off the shoulder for a polo. <laughs> or a button down. I'll send you my, um, my AO3 later in case you want to read any of my cringy ass fanfic. Can you send me a screenshot of that dress? Mm -hmm. So I can make sure I get the pleats and stuff right? Yeah, because I want that outfit. I'm loosely basing her off of you. I said loosely. I could have... Hey, babe. I could have based her off of Maggie. The world is not ready for that kind of extroverted energy. Point. There you go. Thank you. Oh, that's cute as fuck. I'd wear it. I'd wear the shit out of that. Mm -hmm. And because I am extra as fuck, it is going to have poofy fucking sleeves.
I'm gonna make Yang more immature run Ruby and yet more loving run as Hazel because he's the other sibling. Aw, that's so cute. I mean, that's just how it be sometimes, you know? And then does she were hmm. I'm trying to figure out what kind of shoes she wears. Does she wear cute little ankle shoes, knee highs? Does she wear fishnets? Does she wear no tights? Do you want to do this in true D and D fashion and roll for it? Fuck it, we're gonna roll these for it. My love, you have control of the dice. Alright. What's what? Um Socks. Let's do socks first. Socks. So... Actually, let's do shoes first. And what should I do? A D4 or... Let's start with a D4. Uh, odds for shoes, evens for boots. Shoes. Okay, so she wears shoes. Alright. Now... Like Mar do you want to do like Mary Jane's, the platform type... The cute little ones with the buckles. The shoes like I wear all the time. Your character shoes? Yeah. I'm thinking more like my ankle boots that I have. Yeah, those aren't technically boots. No, those are sh those are shoes, but... All right, um, so, so now, does she wear tights, socks, leggings? So tights, socks, leggings, or fishnets? Yep. Tights, socks, leggings, fishnets. Go ahead and roll these. The D4 said fuck you. Fishnets. Alright. I have a feeling that... Uh, In true D&D &D fashion. Yes, we did just rollies for her outfit. Oh, that's so sweet. Blake deserves happiness, damn it. Yes, we love women in fishnets around here. I can't draw shoes to save my life, but we're going to try. Yeah, no, I have a, a few Ruby OCs myself. Um, I gave Crow a wife. Because I'm sorry, the fucker deserves to be happy. Um, she is a cat faunus. There's a, a joke in there. It's I can't say it without, ru without ruining the plot. But um, his wife, he's a cat faunus. Who is uh, Blake's aunt on her dad's side. And, um, 
I haven't decided if I'm including this in the story yet, but in one of the storylines in my head, uh, they have a son named Pan, as in Pan, the god of mischief. I fucking love Pan, but I also hate that little shit. Same. But, um, yeah, she is a teacher at Beacon, and her whole thing is... Eh, go with the flow. But also, don't make Cat Mom angry. Cat Mom's not mad. Cat Mom is... Disappointed. disappointed. I'm sorry, Cat Mom! God, what was it I said the other day for that? I used that somewhere recently. We were talking about something. With one of our buddies. No, it was just us. Was it? Yeah, we were in the car. We have a lot of car conversations to be We here. do. Hashtag don't make cat mom angry. But um, one of my other OCs that I made um, is in a relationship with John Watts or Arthur Watts, sorry, because I love that man's design and Chris Sabat could easily destroy me with his voice and I'd be saying yes, sir, by a play with another. And she is the younger sister of James Ironwood who said, fuck it and went and joined the bad guys. Cause her boyfriend was like, Hey, your brother's kind of fucked. And she's like, yeah, he kind of is. I know this is not how you draw fish nets. This is just a placeholder. And we have the skeletal work done. I'm actually really proud of this one. See, I really like John, but that's because he reminds me a lot of my uncle. Mm -hmm. I really miss him. Me Interesting. I look forward to seeing how that plays out. Okay. Now to start the line work.
hell just happened? My laptop oh, is... Oh, there it is. That'll be really cool to see. I'm really interested to see how that works out. Well, however you do it, I'm really interested to see how it works out. Sure, I'll, maybe I'll write up one of my OCs and send it to you. Okay, guys, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to stream much longer. My internet, or not my internet, sorry. My computer just can't handle it. My computer is lagging really bad. Um, I will be posting up these character pages as I finish them. I'll be posting up on my Instagram. Um, I will be posting them up on my Twitter, up in the Discord. So keep an eye out for them. I'm going to be making a channel just for this Webtoons where there's going to be updates. So keep an eye out for that. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I'm sorry the stream is kind of short. I just... I need to get my system upgraded. That's all there is to it. Um, real quick, we're going to find a raid target. Who is live right now? Okay. Are you able to set it up? Or do, you, do I need to do it? I can try. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and raid one of mine and my wife's favorite voice actresses, Erin Fitzgerald. If you've ever played Persona 4, you know her as Chie. Um, she's also been in Ed, Ed and Eddie and a bunch of other things that are absolutely amazing. So when we get over there, um, 
please be sure to give her some. I, I don't have permission. You should. And you can, you're the only person that can do it. It's exclamation, right? It's slash. And it's. Aaron Fitzgerald. All one word. E R I N. F I T Z G E R A L D. Yay! Alright, guys. Be sure to give her some love when we get over there. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I promise my stream will be better next time. I'm really trying to fix it. I just don't have the money I need to fix it right now. Other than that, be awesome. Stay safe. Love everybody. And we will see you all very soon.